Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salat wa salam wa rasulullah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm Catherine Jones, emotional and spiritual resilience educator, mentor and coach and founder of the Back to the Future Mentoring Academy. And we're doing 19 days of COVID-19 live classes. Today's day two, be like water flowing with the inevitable change. So I chose water because water flows and even though there's sticks and stones and other things that cross its path, it navigates around those obstacles. And that's how we need to approach what's happening in front of us, inshallah, and what's happening around us, inshallah, with the virus. So what prevents us from being like water? Why is it that we are stressed and anxious and we're not really going with the flow we're finding ourselves? You know, trapped in a a lot of emotional turmoil, a lot of thinking, a lot of um, maybe fretful, panicky type of actions. It's all actually to do with thinking. So in video one, I introduced the concept that, that we're always living in the feelings of our thinking in the moment, that it all comes back to thought in the moment. And that's going to continue to be my theme through these videos, subhanAllah. So what is preventing us from being like water, from navigating around the obstacles that we're experiencing right now? It's fear, stress, anxiety, a whole lot of things that really all come under thinking, which is what we talked about in yesterday's session. Futuristic thinking, like not knowing what the future is going to look like and insecure thinking. Again, it's sort of not knowing what's going to happen and, you know, not being able to have our usual routines and our usual way of managing and controlling things to be okay. So let me unpack those a little bit more for you. So let's look at the futuristic thinking because the stress, anxiety and fearful thinking is generally coming from either a fear of the future or insecure thinking, which are pretty much hand in hand, as we'll see. So who is in charge of the future? It's in fact Allah. And this experience that we're going through is an opportunity for us to actually assess how much we really believe that and how much we have been trying to control or believing we have control over things and therefore now finding ourselves you know in a predicament because we no longer feel that sense of safety or control or knowing about what's going to come next subhanallah so this is actually a really good opportunity for us to check in and go hang on a minute i haven't actually been 100% believing that allah's the one in control because i've been trying to control stuff i've been trying to manage how the future go- is going to pan out subhanallah So let's look at the evidence. With him are the keys of the unseen, the ghaib. No one knows them other than him. He knows what's in the land and sea. No leaf falls, but he knows it. Nor there is a grain in the darkness of the earth or a green or dry thing, but it is in a manifest book. Chapter 6, verse 59. Making it very clear here that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in charge of everything knows everything subhanallah has he knowledge of the unseen the ghaib so he can see the future here allah is challenging us whether we can see the future by implication meaning that actually the answer is no we don't have that it's in chapter 53 verse 35 and say O muhammad so this is where in the quran allah tells muhammad to say something the prophet sallallahu to say something to the people I cannot control any benefits or harm for myself, save that Allah wills. Had I known the unseen, the ghaib, I would have reveled in good and no harm would have touched me. I am only a warner and announcer of good news for people who believe. Chapter 7 verse 188. Now this verse is a very powerful reminder because if the Prophet ﷺ is telling us because Allah has told him to tell us, that he can't control anything, he can't benefit or harm himself. And you know, if he had that knowledge, 
then no harm would have touched him. And we know the story of the Prophet ﷺ. He came to so much harm from the people, subhanAllah, went through so much, subhanAllah, that he's only a warner and announcer of good news for people who believe. SubhanAllah, what does that make us? So the future is in Allah's hands. It always has been. It always will be. And if we've been struggling with that, we've been living in an illusion that somehow we have some control over the future, that somehow we can influence the future. As far as I'm aware, the only way we can have any influence over the future is through dua through turning to Allah and asking Allah. And Allah knows best how that all works. And it's one of those things it's best not to ask too many questions about, but trust that when we turn to Allah about the future and leave the future in Allah's hands, that the best outcomes are what's to come. SubhanAllah, if I'm trusting that. So do you actually believe that to be true? And this is where the problem falls in. We think we are true believers and we don't realize how we've got little gaps or holes in our belief. And this can be one of them, subhanAllah. Fearing the unknown future is not putting our trust in Allah. We're lacking tawakal. Now, I'm not saying that you're lacking tawakal on, as a whole, but in this particular area, of your life and your thinking, there's a lack of tawakal happening. We're not putting our trust in Allah that Allah knows best, that Allah is in control, that this is all happening to Allah's plan. And it is all our own thinking and that's all it is. It's just thought. The thoughts that we're having are the barrier to tawakal, are the barrier to truly believing and relaxing and feeling that heart of rest in remembering that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the future in his hands, subhanAllah. So that our thinking is getting in the way of wisdom, is getting in the way of us knowing wisely what's to do next. And that's a key part of going with the flow or being like water, is to be operating from a state of wisdom. If we're in a state of wisdom, we won't feel concerned or insecure about the future, we will actually be in this present moment and able to see what it is we need to be doing right now, which is what I talked about in yesterday's session. So that wisdom that we need access to is being covered by our own thinking and is available to us through that connection with Allah because that's where the wisdom comes from. It comes from Allah. If we're trying to resolve everything in our head, in our intellectual thinking, it's going to be flawed. But if we are able to really connect with Allah, notice how Allah is guiding us, then inshallah, we are going to be working from a very wise state and have nothing to worry about, inshallah. So let's move on to insecure thinking or a sense of insecurity. And a lot of people are experiencing a sense of insecurity. Will I get it? Will my loved ones get it? I can't go and see my parents. Are they okay? Okay. What if my children get it? What if I die? You know, there's a lot of insecure thinking, right? So there's this need to know. I need to know how it's going. I need to know how many more cases there are. I need to know what's happening. Do we really? We've, we've just seen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything. He knows every seed that's in the darkness of the soil, every leaf that falls. So do we really need to know if the future is in Allah's hands? Do we really need to know? Or can we just relax in the fact that Allah knows nothing is happening without his knowledge and he is the one who is going to execute what happens in the future. And so it's by his will and his plan. And if he knows everything, isn't that going to be the best plan? So do we really need to know? Do we really need to control? Now, that is something that comes from insecure thinking is this need to control. If you find yourself wanting to structure everything, organize everybody, have everybody on some kind of regiment and turning into kind of a military sergeant in order to try and make sure everything works out, probably underneath that's some insecure thinking about something. 
because our need to control things, and that's a very controlling type of way of managing relationships and managing your household, comes from this need of control comes from insecure thinking and nothing else. We, it's a feeling of I'm not okay unless I know. So I'm not okay unless I know what's going on, what everyone is doing, when everyone is doing it. I'm not unco- un- I'm not okay unless it's happening how I've planned it to happen. But now we're kind of going against what we just agreed about earlier, which was that Allah's the one that's in control, right? Allah's the one that has the ultimate plan, right? But we're seeing ourselves as not being okay unless we have control. So if you find yourself being a bit of a military sergeant, there's probably some insecure thinking underneath all of that. And it becomes very hard to let go, very hard to let go if things aren't in a specific routine. Our routines are changing every single day with the announcements from our governments with from, from what's happening. So perhaps this is your test Perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent this so that you can see for yourself this troubled thinking that you've got going on, this insecure thinking that you've got going on that is actually flowing through other areas of your life and leading to you not working from a state of wisdom but from a state of insecurity, subhanAllah. So if if you're finding it very hard to let go, there's an insecure thinking underneath. So what are you not seeing? What are you not seeing in that moment when all of that thinking is going on? You're not seeing that you're not in control, that you have no control, that this isn't up to you, that you're actually trying to do what is actually Allah's job, not yours. Your job is to show up pleasing Allah. Allah's job is to control and not even control, you know, because we have a very negative connotation of the word control. But Allah's the one who plans. And Allah's plan is the best plans. He's the best of planners. That's a much nicer, more comfortable and comforting way of looking at it. So let's have a look at that. Indeed, Allah alone has knowledge of the hour and sends down the rain and knows what is in the wombs. And no soul perceives what it will earn tomorrow, and no soul perceives in what land it will die. Indeed, Allah is knowing and acquainted. See, none of us know. None of us have any say or control over that. None of us know how much we're going to earn tomorrow, and that is a source of real concern right now. That's an area of insecurity right now, isn't it? A lot of jobs have been... uh, ended because of social isolation. A lot of people are having to rethink how they earn a living. And then there's a lot of uncertainty around whether you'll die or not and what land you'll die in. Like some people are stranded in places that they didn't intend to be because all the flights were shut down while they were in another country. So Allah knows. Turn to Allah in the remembrance of Allah to hearts find rest. Do you not see that Allah sends down rain from the sky and we produce thereby fruits of varying colors? And in the mountains are tracks white and red of varying shades and some extreme black. And among people and moving creatures and grazing livestock are various colors similarly. Only those fear Allah from among his servants who have knowledge Indeed, Allah is exalted in might and forgiving. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us. He is the one in control. He has the power and might. Our job is to be his servant. Fear Allah. And gain knowledge. There's knowledge in there too. So what we're doing here right now is part of that. Understanding how we experience life is a big part of the knowledge we need to be able to show up in a way that's pleasing to Allah subhanAllah and indeed Allah exalted in might and forgiving so if you are starting to listen to this 
and you're going, oh, you know, yeah, that's me. I'm so controlling. Oh no, that's really bad. I haven't been trusting a lot. I'm lacking tawakal. And you've got all that thinking going on. Beating yourself up does not help. We're reminded here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a forgiving. He can forgive you, but you need to turn back to him. And that's not going to happen if you're beating yourself up because you're too busy beating yourself up instead of turning back to him. So don't do it, <laughs> all right? Don't do it. <laughs> trying to control is setting yourself up to fail. If you're trying to feel better by controlling things, you are setting yourself up to fail. You're se- because of course you're going to fail. You're not in control. It's not going to work out the way you plan it. Sometimes it might to some degree, but a lot of the time it won't. And then you'll feel like a failure. It's not your job. You're setting yourself up to fail. And it's all just your own thinking. At the end of the day, the barrier to going with the flow is thought in the moment. That's all it is. If life feels like you're pushing a barrow of massive rocks up a hill, then something's not right. If life feels like you're going with the flow, there is an ease. You still might have challenges and logistics to work out. But there's a flow in there and you can see Allah's blessings as you go. Then inshallah, you're on the right track. But if you're pushing those boulders uphill, You've got some thinking that's going on that's making your life difficult. It's getting in the way of your wisdom, your connection with Allah, and your ability to show up in the way that Allah is looking for you to show up. In other words, you're not going to be passing those tests that Allah is sending you in the best way, subhanAllah. If you found this helpful, enlightening, inspiring in any way, shape, or form, Make sure you share it with others. Invite them to 19dayscov19.com. Get them to join. We are going to be continuing for another 17 days where we'll be covering things to do with parenting, being isolated with each other, the fact that Ramadan is going to be different. All of these different topics that I've seen people needing and discussing. We're going to cover them over the next 17 days. So make sure that you invite others to register. Make sure you're registered so you get the reminders and you don't miss anything. I really look forward to seeing you tomorrow, inshallah. Share the khair. Subhanaka Allahumma bihamdika shida la ila ila anta stafaruka tuba lake. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.